everybody. Welcome to Life of Sunny Lee. Uh, my name is Kathy Jarvis and it has been a busy week. It's uh, February the 2nd. Can you believe it's February already? Wow. And um, it's time to start putting in some of the seeds inside for the spring garden. So on Saturday, I went and I started doing some of the seedlings. I've got some um, cauliflower, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, and broccoli up. My petunias are just coming up. Pansies have not come up yet. I took the cover off of them. Not for sure if they'll even germinate since they were, it was an old packet. But I just, you know, just wanted to get the seeds out so I can get new seeds, maybe, if I need them. But I wanted to give these a test. If they don't work, we'll buy some new seeds and put new seeds in. No big deal. But this is the beginning of the season. Usually I don't start my brassicas until later. And these are a cool weather crop. They prefer the cool weather. I usually put them out too late and they go straight to seed. So we're getting them started first this year. And then I'm going to start the rest of the warm weather plants later on. Probably in the end of February or about maybe even the second week of March maybe. I'm going to wait off. I usually do it in about February 16th. And last year I had tomato plants that are just really bigger than what I really wanted. So I kind of want to start them a little bit later this year. So we did this on Saturday. Now on Sunday we were planning on going to church and we woke up that morning and found that there was water in the basement and this was not caused by the rain. This was caused by either a leak in the um, geothermal unit or into the, the water system itself. So we had to take care of that and he's still working on that process. I know he uh, cleaned out the hot water heater down there, which made even a bigger mess on the floor. And he's got the new elements in on the hot water heater. That's done for the year. And now he's, we've got a call in to the service guy to look at the uh, geothermal to make sure it's okay. And we'll go from there. So we didn't, we had to miss church on Sunday because of that. Uh, Monday, we went up to um, Edinburgh. And have lunch with our oldest son. And that's always nice to touch bases with him. And we had a good time. The food was good. The waitress was very, very nice. And, um, and while we were away from the house, my Amazon order came. At least half of it. And this first order that came were these nifty little seed starting pots and what I like about these is that they're sil silicone you can push them up really easy they won't crack they won't break and the best part about it is at the end of the season when I wash, rinse, rinse them out I can throw them in the dishwasher to sanitize them it means I won't have to spend hours cleaning each little one putting it in um uh, hot water or bleach or something to sanitize it. I can just put them in the dishwasher, hit the sanitizing button, and it will clean them. So we're going to give them a try this year. There's um, 72 cells. Fits into um, one of those trays nicely. And we'll see if we like them. If we do, I'll order more and eventually replace all of my little plastic ones. The plastic ones that you buy at this big store are okay, but they're pain to clean, and also they don't last but a few years. Another thing that came was this cat carrier. Now, what I like about this one is that it folds up nicely into a little bag, and you don't have to worry about having a big, heavy one to take. And the next day, my other order came, which is a backpack cat carrier. 
Now, the reason I got three cat carrier, new cat carriers is because I've got two in the other room and the crates that the cats are using as hide, hideaways, beds, or whatever you want to call them. And I've got a third one that another cat's using. They, the handle broke on it. And my problem is, is I've got 11 cats. And to take these cats to the vet, I have to either take them all at once and pay one big fee. Or I can take them to an annual rabies clinic that we have and just one after the other and get their shots. And that's a big difference in price. I have called around and it's really a shame that you can't just take a cat to a vet and say, I just want a rabies shot, nothing else, without being charged a office visit. Yeah. So to take a cat to the vet just for a rabies shot, to take three cats to the rabies shot, to the vet to get a rabies shot, would cost me over $200. Okay. I've got 11 of them. To take them to the vet, a rabies clinic, is only 15 to $20. I don't know what it's going to be this year. It was 15 last year. I know to get the rabies shot from this place is 20 bucks, but then you have the office visit attached to it, which makes the price almost $200. So really my big beef is you should be able to take a cat, especially a barn cat, not a, not really a pet pet, but a barn cat. You should be able to take it in, get a shot, pay the 20 bucks, and walk out. You know, just like a rabies clinic. You know, I think it's to the point where they're making it almost impossible for people to take in cats. And most of my, all my cats are strays, or have been at one time, or are products of strays that came. And I've taken them in, I've gotten them neutered, I've gotten them spayed, you know, and got the shots. And now it's time to get the shots again. And I'm trying to find a way to do it that's not going to break the bank. So that's my rant for the day. Marvette, he does a great job. In fact, I just was in there again today. Uh, not today, Thursday. I was in there Thursday to pick up more medicine for shoes. Now, Shoes has her 14th birthday on last Thursday. And to celebrate that, we got her more medicine. <laughs> uh, she is still on the abi for the sores that she has. Uh, he also put her on some um, medicine that's supposed to help stop the leakage. Because we've come to the conclusion that the leakage is what's causing these sores. So we're going to try this medicine, see if that will help reduce the amount that she's leaking. And um, continue cleaning her as much as I can. You know, I try to do that a couple times a day. But with her constantly leaking, and I mean, we're going through pee pads like crazy. And um, so hopefully this medicine will help a little bit on that part. And we can get these sores healed up. She is walking a little bit better. Uh, you can tell when her sores are more pronounced. This is when she has trouble walking. So we're going to work with this medicine and see if we can get this under control. Uh, like I said, she's 14. Doing well otherwise, except having trouble with that back leg. Her ear is still down from where she has that, uh, where she hit the <coughs> against the wall. But it's healing. It's it's um, not as hard as it was, not as balloony as it was. So we're we're getting it healed up that away. So she's doing fine. As you can see, we've got the washable pee pads down. And um, I'm having to wash those about every other day. Plus we have disposable ones that we put down also. And she does have diapers that we use if on occasion when she needs them. So... We're getting progress there. And on um, Thursday, we also went and picked up the rent from the apartments. And one of the apartments is having trouble with their plumbing. So we had to call a plumber and get that taken care of. Uh, Friday, Friday was a busy, oh, Friday is a busy day. Started out this morning going to the hospital for my 
bone density test and my mammogram. Bone density, density test isn't bad, but no one likes the mammogram ones. Nope. Anyway, that's done. And then we went and got the groceries for the week. And that has been our week. So that's been our week. So hopefully you have had a nice week. Things have gone well with you. That's my Mardi Gras tree in the background, which will be changed on February the 14th, I think, to an Easter tree. So hope you had a good week. Remember, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. God bless. Bye, everybody.